Good morning. May the power, peace, grace, and hope of the Holy One lead us forward in faith and service this day. Welcome to the worship of the St. Paul's United Methodist Church, a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. Thank you for joining us for worship today. I am Reverend Becky Sweet. I am honored to serve as senior pastor here. Our worship leadership, for whom we are grateful, includes our ushers and hospitality ministers, Diane Dawson, our liturgist, Michael Kulata, our camera operator, David Kingsley, our technical director. It's wonderful to have Joan Reppert back at the keyboard again as our pianist today, Emily Preston, our choir director, the Chancel Choir will be offering us a recorded piece of special music today. Maud Rith, our church administrative assistant. Jamie Breedlove Crouch, our prayer leader today and our Loving Care Ministries coordinator. And the rest of the staff as listed in the bulletin. I extend a warm welcome to all those who worship regularly with us, as well as those who are visiting with us today, either here on site or via our live streaming. If you are a visitor today, you may be handed a Connect card, which we would ask you to complete so that I might send you a thank you note for your time spent with us in worship. If you are worshiping via Facebook Live, please sc scroll down and leave a comment there. And if you are worshiping via our live streaming, we would ask that you scroll down on the worship page of the website and complete the virtual friendship pad. Also on that worship page of the website, you will find our bulletin for today and our hymns so that you may participate fully. The additional candle on the altar again today is to remind us to daily pray for peace in Ukraine and in all of the surrounding countries and to pray for all of those who are refugees because of this war and those who are offering the refugees hospitality. Today is Peace with Justice Sunday. You might have noticed a slippery little insert in your bulletin. That is for Peace with Justice Sunday. This is one of the six special Sundays in the United Methodist Church when we receive an offering for a special purpose. Our social principles call us to love our enemies, seek justice, and serve as reconcilers of conflict. The offering that you designate for Peace with Justice Sunday will be granted for ministries both within our annual conference and outside of the conference, split 50-50. Today is also Trinity Sunday. Today's worship focuses explicitly on the mystery, power, and beauty of our triune God. This day marks the acknowledgement that all three persons of the Trinity exist together eternally. May we have a divine encounter with God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer as we worship together. And we will begin that time of worship with greeting one another with signs of the love and peace of Christ. So if you are able, please stand and offer a holy wave or a gesture from my heart to yours as we greet one another. And let's turn and face the cameras in the back of the sanctuary and extend our greeting to those who are watching online. And you may be seated as Joan offers to us centering music that we might focus our hearts and our thoughts on worshiping God this day.
Thank you, Joan. If you are able, would you please rise for the call to worship? Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the triune God. Our first hymn today is the familiar Holy, 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 found on page 64 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
may be seated. Would you please join your hearts with mine in prayer? God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we ask for your presence to enter this space. We know that in self-giving love, your very nature teaches us how to love one another. Holy Parent and Creator, Christ and Redeemer, Spirit and Advocate, we call upon you to teach us this hour. Teach us to pray, teach us to love, teach us to be one as you are one. With all of the divisions we create with our own biases, from social class to race, from gender to age, from ability to different abilities, we know we still have much to learn. Teach us in this hour, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture readings this morning are from the Inclusive Bible. First reading, John 16, verses 12 through 15. Jesus said, I have much more to tell you, but you can't bear to hear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, she will guide you into all truth. She won't speak on her own initiative, Rather, she'll speak only what she hears, and she'll announce to you things that are yet to come. In doing this, the Spirit will give glory to me, for she will take what is mine and reveal it to you. Everything that Abba God has, has belongs to me. This is why I said that the Spirit will take what is mine and reveal it to you. And our second reading is Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Now, since we've been made right to God's sight by our faith, we are at peace with God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us to the grace in which we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to the day on which we will be all become all that God has intended. But not only that, we even rejoice in our afflictions. We know that affliction produces perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and character, hope. And such a hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I would like to invite any children to come forward who would like to share with me in the children's message. Come on, Henry. <laughs> How are you today? Good. I am glad to hear that. I brought something to show you. Isn't this pretty? Do you know what it is? Look, look at it closely. Do you know what it is when you take three strands and move them back and forth to make something like this? That's exactly right. It is a braid. And look, it is made up of three different kinds of ribbon. We have a red ribbon, ribbon a cream-colored ribbon, and a gold one with red inside of it. And that one is really sparkly, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. So I braided these together to make one thing. Now, I want you to take one end of it. Can you pull hard? Yeah, pull harder. Wow, that is strong, isn't it? Now you can let go. Do you think just one piece of that ribbon would be that strong? No. No, I don't either. I think it's stronger because there are three together, and those three are all woven together. I did this to show you a little bit about what God is like. Now, you'll have to use your imagination a little bit, and I know you have a good one, so I think you'll be right on page with me. So, there are three parts of God. God the creator, the one that made the sky and the ocean and the land and all the critters and even us. You know about that one. And then there's Jesus. Yeah, Jesus was God coming to the earth in human flesh to live among us and teach us and show us how to love one another. And then there is the spirit. That's the one we talked about last Sunday. Yeah, that's the third one. And the Spirit is kind of Jesus' presence with us all the time. We Remember, it's hard to see the Spirit, but yet we can feel the Spirit with us. So those three parts of God work together, kind of like the strands on my braid, sometimes doing different things, but helping us to make our faith stronger and stronger and stronger like this braid is so strong that you and I were tugging on it pretty hard, weren't we? It was not breaking. You are exactly right. So there are some times when we talk about God the creator and how wonderful and beautiful creation is, right? And how nice it is to have friends like you. And there are other times when we talk about Jesus and how Jesus taught us so much about how to love, and faith in Jesus can help us to live forever. And sometimes we talk about the Spirit, how the Spirit guides us and reminds us of Jesus' teachings, but all together they make one amazing God, right? Yeah. So I just wanted to show you this. In fact, you could have this if you want it. Okay. I'll keep it for another day then. All right. But it'll remind us of how amazing our God is, three in one, right? All right, let's pray together, and I bet the folks out there will help us to pray too. Thank you, God, for creating and loving and guiding us. Help us, please, to tell others What an amazing God you are. What an amazing God you are. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up today, Henry.
Isn't that beautiful? Can never hear that song too many times. Let's pray together. Fill our lungs, O oh God, with the breath of your Spirit. Fill our hearts with the love of Jesus Christ. And fill our souls with your passion to do justice and make peace. Amen. It has been quite a week, friends. It has been quite a week. I'm just going to give you the highlights of some of the joys and the challenges that, that I've experienced this week. Some of you might know that I had a precious bunny, Jacques, who passed away last Sunday night, and I miss Jacques terribly. Monday, I went for my usual walk around the Falls Creek area, and when I was up by the Ithaca Falls, my shoe broke. My shoe broke. I had to limp home. <laughs> it, it was quite a sight. But the sights got better as the week went on. Tuesday, Paul came home from the hospital. Yay! <laughs> Yay! After about five hours of waiting for medications and last-minute tests and equipment that we needed, and Paul just about clawing his way out the window of the hospital, we were able to come home to Ithaca. And what a joy it was, even though it was raining when we got here and the ramp was wet. He was bound and determined he was going up it under his own power, which he did. Wednesday, I went for my usual walk. 
And not too far from the Ithaca Falls, um, my clumsy feet tripped and I made just a graceful bounce off the sidewalk. I um, looked around quickly to make sure no one was watching and <laughs> picked myself up, brush burns and all, and limped on home again. <laughs> I've learned something about my walks. Thursday, we had a new routine that we um, enjoyed in the parsonage, three generations under one roof. One of the um, nurses in the hospital told me I was a part of the sandwich generation. I said, oh, no, no, no. I am the cream in the Oreo cookie. <laughs> Friday, we had some wonderful cherished guests arrive, some cousins that I only get to see about once every four years, and my youngest son, Daniel and Tegan, and their two kittens came to visit us. What a joy. What a joy we had together. Saturday was an exciting day, yesterday. I went to um, Sky Lake for their 75th anniversary and saw Linda there. I only stayed at the anniversary celebration for about an hour because we needed to clean out the home that Paul had been living in while he was working at Sky Lake part-time. So a bunch of us went over there to do that. And while I was gone here at the Parsonage, there was a whole parade of helpers coming by, people who were keeping Paul company and helping with things around the Parsonage. And what a joy it was um, to have so much wonderful help with all that we needed to accomplish. And then, oh, just a, probably 15 or 20 minutes after all the helpers left, um, Mom was going outside to be a helper herself and trim a vine that was growing into my pot of flowers. And um, she tripped and fell, and we made a quick trip to the emergency room where we spent the evening last night. And you'll have to ask her when you see her, and I'm sure she's watching this, she's going to have a lovely scar in the shape of her first initial on her arm. Um, but the folks took very good care of us, even in the middle midst of uh, mom's desire for me to come home and work on what I was going to say to you today. It's been quite a week. But last evening as we were sitting in the emergency room and I was prayerfully considering life, not just my life, but life in general, I realized that there are so many names that are familiar to me now which were not familiar to me a couple of years ago, but these names have become household names. Uvalde, Texas. The Pulse Nightclub. Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Texas. Those names are of places that I hadn't heard of until there was crisis. Kharkiv, Ukraine, and Odessa. Sierra Leone, cities in the Philippines that I have a hard time pronouncing. But yet when I hear them, they've become familiar because there has been one heart-wrenching crisis after another in our world. Crises of gun violence and bullying, mental health issues, racism, weapons of all kinds, people turning cars into weapons as they drive into crowds like in Charlottesville. My goodness. My goodness, what has this world come to? The people who have been targets of these types of acts of killing have been adults and children and youth, people of different races, people of different gender identities. Anyone who is different has become a target Sometimes just because people are angry and they're taking it out on someone else. Sometimes because of a hatred they cannot get past. 
A couple of weeks ago, uh, Bishop Bickerton, who is the bishop of the New York area down around the city and Connecticut and a couple of counties in New Jersey, and who is also the president of our International Council of Bishops, wrote a letter to the people called United Methodists, including us, where he reminds us that so many times we become so paralyzed with unthinkable acts of violence, and we recognize how people's lives are forever changed, and yet we've become numb. He says, a recent FBI report reveals that active shooter incidents increased over 50% in 2021. The number of mass shooting incidences in 2021 were up 171% over 2020. Incidents of violence all around us are growing, multiplying with every news cycle. And it's interesting that he mentioned every news cycle because I have found that there are so many incidents of violence and killing that we cannot even hear about all of them on the news. There are too many to fill up the hour. Law enforcement officers, neighbors, random strangers, LGBTQ plus persons, black persons, all are targeted in a way that shows our lack of respect for the life that God has created. Bishop Bickerton goes on to state, my outrage and anger demand a statement, but my love of people demands action. I spend my life thinking about people. I am a person of prayer, he says, but this cycle of violence has reached a point where there are no words good enough. No statement that meets the need. No thought that will salve the wounds and heal the hurt. He says, I believe that we must, with conviction, determine how we are going to move from words to actions. As I sat in the emergency room last night, I thought, wow, my life has been filled with a lot of crises and a lot of joys this week. But that is nothing, nothing compared with what so many others are experiencing. The loss of a loved one, a senseless murder, an accident or an intentional act that forever changes a family, a church, a community, and our world. It's no wonder there are people who are bitter, people who are so sad that they don't know where to turn or how to pick things up and move on. It's no wonder. But friends, today is Peace with Justice Sunday. Today is the Sunday just like every other year when we are called, when we are challenged to take action, to do more than just think and pray, but to take action so that we can be reconcilers, so that we can be makers of peace, so that we can help ourselves and others learn what it means to live in a just society that looks like the family that God created us to be. Not just a family where power and control reign, not just a family where the biggest guns win, but a family that lives the way God wants us to live. Our offering on Peace with Justice Sunday is split 50-50, as I mentioned before. 50% stays within our annual conference, and that means some of that money will be given as grants to those churches around the east side of Buffalo and that Tops Market where folks were killed because of the color of their skin and help in the healing and help people to know they are loved 
and valued and cherished by God and by us. Some of that money will go to Sierra Leone, where 11- and 12-year-old girls are still involved in child marriage, where they live in extreme poverty, where there is little or no maternal health care in so many regions. Some of the Peace with Justice money goes to the Israel-Palestine area, where folks are experiencing such turmoil, especially in the Gaza Strip, where people need to cross borders to work and earn a livelihood every day, and in so doing, take the risk of losing their lives because they are different than the majority, where homes are being bulldozed and groves of olive trees are being plowed under. Some of that money goes to Korea, where the people who call one another family in North and South Korea are still at odds with one another and still fear when that bomb is going to drop. Some of that money goes to programs that address the structural policies and laws that continue to perpetuate racism, misogyny, any kind of ism that separates people and tries to bring about peace and respect and love and collaboration that helps us to live in harmony, building one another up because of the love of God in our hearts. Some of that money goes to help with promoting human rights. It goes toward legal advocacy, that collaborative programming, and prayerful support for one another. You know, God is being constantly revealed to us whether it is through a physician assistant in an emergency room, whether it is through a student at Cornell from the Ukraine who speaks poignantly about what her parents are experiencing who still live there, whether it is through the scriptures that we hold dear and count as holy in our lives, a disciple is someone who is called and filled with praise and lament. And because of praise or lament, is called to take action to represent Christ to others. This is a time of so many mixed emotions that we cannot help but to wonder how will we go on? How will we keep ourselves from being numb? How can we raise the level of integrity in our community and in our society? How can we help each and every person know that they are loved and worthy? Worthy when we ourselves sometimes don't feel worthy. We do that in many, many unique ways. Sometimes it is through the playing of it as well with my soul. What a blessing, Joan, thank you. Sometimes it is through quoting just a little line of Scripture to someone that makes a difference in their lives this day. From whence does my help come? It comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Sometimes it comes through a child who is eager to come and be a part of the children's message and is just so respectful, saying thank you and no thank you in ways that melt my heart. Sometimes it comes from a hug or a note from someone that cares or just that question, how are you doing today? Sometimes it comes through our offerings that go into places that we may not be able to pronounce or identify, but those offerings that help to convey God's love to others. Friends, 
Let's each find our unique ways, and let's work together as well that we might convey to the world what a difference the love of Christ makes. Let's bring peace with justice to our hurting world this week. Amen and amen. I'm going to invite you to sing because that's one of my favorite ways to witness. And our hymn of response is, As a Fire is Meant for Burning. It's found in the Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2,237. As a fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name, not to preach our creeds or customs, but to be seated. Today for the prayers of the people, I will be using the name of God, Gyro, which one of the meanings is peaceful place. Our response today will be Gyro, you are more than enough. Let us pray. Dear Gyro, now since we have been made right in your sight by our faith, we are at peace with you through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today we thank and praise you for that peace, even when the world around us seems to be falling apart. We pray for the peace of Gyro for all those that have suffered violence this week, for the victims of mass shootings and their families, and for the families of those that have committed the violence, we pray that they would find their peaceful rest in you. 
Help us to make changes in our actions and laws to prevent all of us, to protect all of us, but especially to protect those most vulnerable. Gyro, you are more than enough. We pray for all the countries this week suffering from the violence of war, especially Ukraine and Russia. We pray for those that have been affected by climate change. Gyro, you know those families whose lives have been destroyed by tornadoes, floods, and fires. Help us to find the strength and knowledge to correct our ways so that Mother Earth will not be completely destroyed. Show each of us our responsibility and the ways that we can help. Gyro, you are more than enough. Because of our faith in Christ, we have been brought to the grace in which we now stand, and we confidently ask you for your healing touch for all those in our congregation that need your healing. For those listed in the bulletin and those we hold in our heart, we ask you for our healing mentally, physically, and spiritually. For those that have been healed and are continuing in their recovery, we give thanks and ask that you increase their strength and hope each day. Gyro, you are more than enough. We ask that you give comfort and peace to the family and friends of Jackie Warren this week, who entered into your eternal rest. Gyro, you are more than enough. For our church, St. Paul's, we pray that you would stir our spirit within our congregation. We pray for the leadership of the church, and we pray that you bring congregants and their families back to worship with you and with us. And now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we have those who forgive us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Show us, Gyro, how we can become all that you have created us to be within our congregation and to the world around us. May those that have been rejected by the church be welcome in this place, and may they experience Jesus through our actions and welcome, including and especially our LGBTQIA siblings. Help us in all things to rejoice in our affliction. Help us to embrace the afflictions that produce perseverance so that our character can be proven, that we can have hope and not be disappointed. Help us to embrace the love of God that has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Most of all, help our unbelief and help us to be content in every circumstance because gyro, you are more than enough. Amen. You may have heard the statement, there is no justice without peace. There is no peace without justice. Today we have the opportunity to give tangible support to ministries which work for peace with justice here in our conference, in our nation, and in our world seeking to live out our calling to work toward personal and social holiness and to alleviate poverty, care for the environment, protect civil and human rights, increase quality health care, seeking peaceful relationships are all priorities grounded also in racial justice. You may make your offering today by using the donate button on the church website or by mailing your offering to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. For those in this room, 
our ushers will be delighted to receive your gifts as the offering plates are passed and as we enjoy another musical blessing offered to us by Joan. you please join with me in the prayer of dedication? Let us pray. O oh, great and holy God, we sing hymns, we offer prayers, we stand in awe of your creation, we are humbled by your love. When we come to you, we are often asking something from you. You have given to us even when we did not ask. Now, in these moments, we are not asking for anything, but offering our appreciation for all your mercies. We offer our money, we offer ourselves. We pray that both these gifts and our lives will honor you in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn may be found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 671, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing.
be seated. I encourage you to read all of the announcements in the bulletin as well as those in our weekly emails each week so that you may be informed and of the ministry and growth opportunities available to all of us. The trustees will be hosting two more work days at the end of this month on June 24th and 25th. That's a Friday and a Saturday, and your service would be gratefully received. If you have questions concerning the projects, you may see Cynthia Lunine. And on Friday in the weekly email, there will be a link to the Sign Up Genius, where you may sign up for a particular time slot if you would like to do that. The Local and World Missions Committee continues to seek volunteers to make sandwiches, to deliver them to the Friendship Center at St. John's Community Services. Our church is responsible for the lunches just one day each month, but we're having some challenges getting volunteers, so think about that, pray about it. The dates are in your bulletin, as well as contact information for Carolyn, with whom you or a group may sign up for that mission service. Just a reminder, we continue to collect non-perishable food items and hygiene items for the blue cabinets in the area. There are receptacles by the tables right outside of the sanctuary doors where you may place your donations and they will be delivered to those blue cabinets. Centering prayer before worship continues under the leadership of Reverend Pam Carey at 9.45 on Sunday mornings in the Durham Room. Anyone is welcome to join the group. Please try to be there on time for that time of silent and guided prayer. Stir the Spirit is a time hosted by the Way of Prayer group that will take place on Thursday evenings during this month of June from 6.30 to 7.30. Everyone is welcome to join that group as well, and if you would like more information, contact Holly Matheson or Jamie Breedlove Crouch. Our Older Adult Ministries picnic is coming up this Tuesday. Woohoo! I've been waiting for this for a long time. We've been planning for months, and I hope you are planning to join us Tuesday from 11.30 to 2 o'clock at the Stewart Park Small Pavilion. Please bring your own lunch. Be prepared for some wonderful fellowship with other folks there. And we'll also have the bonus of hearing what's new with Stewart Park. Please come and join us. We are certainly looking forward to sharing together once again. There are camp scholarships available for children and youth going to Camp Kazawasco this summer. If you are interested in those, please see Mary Lou Tenney for more information. Reverend Joe Allen Tuttle will be leading a study called Faith in Science Fiction this summer. There are just two sessions, one on June 29th and one on August 18th. If you would like to sign up, you may contact Joe Allen and her contact information is in the bulletin. I invite everyone to stay for our fellowship time today following worship as we extend gratitude to Ann Hurst for her years of service to St. Paul's United Methodist Church as um, our hospitality and connections coordinator. My goodness, we have long titles in this church. The fellowship time will be held in the memorial room because we heard that there is rain coming and there will be refreshments to go for you to take with you when you leave. But please stay and offer our gratitude to Anne as she completes her time of employment with us. And now would you receive the dismissal with blessing? Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and to redeem, so God sends us out into the world to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to be light, God's light in the world, and may the grace and peace of God the Creator Christ the Redeemer and the Holy Spirit who sustains us 
Go with us now and forevermore. Amen.